All right, guys, just to bring you back up to speed, um, Matt's had to do a bunch of things off camera, uh, one of which was like grinding a knob off of the cam for the Formula Atlantic motor. There's like a, it's an optical sensor, isn't it? No, nah, reluctor. A reluctor. Red reluctor, yeah. So there's what it is in the, on the camshaft, you've got two little like um, tooths. Uh, I think they're for balance. I don't know what they're there for, to be honest. Um, but in the Formula Atlantic TRD crank camshafts, there's only one of these teeth and they use that on the cam cover on the intake side to reference a home signal. So then it works off speed and home on the on the engine. Yeah. Um, so I had to modify the Kelford cam to suit that. So we don't, because we're not running the TRD cams anymore. So I just modified that cam off camera. Um, it's nothing really worth showing. It's just grinding a tooth down. It's and boring it's, stuff. Yeah it's, yeah. yeah, it's not really exciting stuff. But now we're up to the prepping for a head gasket and bolting the head on. So. Yeah. So this is the uh, the moment that Nico was waiting for, especially been talking about how he wanted to see this done. Yeah, for sure. So this is the TJ. You get out of here. Um, so we've got the copper head firing head gasket system. So here's the the gasket. You've probably seen this in previous video. Talk about it on my engine. Here's our firings. So they sit inside our copper gasket like so. So there's a bit of prep work that goes into this. And on the other side of this piece of cardboard, you'll see a lot of like this black goo, which is our uh, three bond that we use. And it's uh, it's like it's like uh, you know what kindergarten finger paints. If there's a bit of uh, you've got to basically smear this glue on uh, to a thin layer, but basically with your fingers um, is the best result that I've found until it's at a uniform thickness across the whole gasket. Uh, and then around the oil hole, we will just prep that backwards so that when the when you clamp it down, there's no bead on the inside here. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's probably the most critical part of it. Aside from that, you do want to get a nice even film thickness. Um, yeah. We only have about three thousandth of uh, an inch protrusion on these rings. If you look down on this side, you'll see that it's actually got a um, recess cut, and then that will that. Uh, that corresponds to this groove that we've had cut in the deck face of the block. Now this block isn't clean just yet, it's all oily from the assembly process. So I'm going to give that a wipe down with some brake clean and a um, lint free rag. Um, and then basically what happens, these rings snap into place. So if I actually put that on, you can actually listen for it. You probably just barely heard it. Hear that snap? So that yep. snaps into place. So. That ring there is incredibly strong against cylinder pressure. Me and Nick were just talking about this off camera. Um, these rings are incredibly resistant to pressure against them. Um, I mean, as that sits in here with a head bolted down onto it, um, especially with a half inch head stud, the cylinder pressure, is it's really difficult to push that out of the way, which is when a blown head gasket is doing its bang, basically being pushed out of the way and it will blow into your coolant passage very rare that you're going to blow into your oil passage because it's got to travel this far when it just blows generally out into your water passage. I mean, the path yeah. of least resistance is straight across the water. Yeah. Um, it's very rare. You will not get oil and water mix on these systems, um, on, uh, especially on a 4A. It's very rare to blow a head gasket to mix oil and water. Normally it's cylinder pressure to water just because of how the gasket's designed and the cylinder head and the water passages and stuff. But like you say, we're just going to prep this up. We're going to clean it. Um, and get it done. Cylinder heads there, ready to go. I've just given this a light wipe down with our brake clean along the deck face. Um, so we'll, uh, yeah, get it done. It's one of the last stages of getting this motor together, I guess. Cool, let's get into it, dude. Let's do it. All right, I guess I'll get this guy out. I just can't in. get over those valves, they're so sick. They're nice, They huh? just, just fit. Yeah, they're, they're, that, that's what the size of the valve that should be in that engine. Yeah. If not, it should be the standard, like the, the valves that you got in yours should be the standard valve size. Right, and yeah. Then, and then uh, these should be the oversized. Yeah. All right, so we'll just prep this gasket. So do you get like a scotch brite or a sandpaper and, or you just clean it with a rag? Just all I'm doing is just wiping down um, any oils from my hands and touching it. Yeah. Um, you can scotch brite this up and make it rough, but mate, this glue that we use, like that's what's just come off now. So that's obviously a bit of ink there yeah, texture, from texture yeah. and then whatever that is, it's probably like hand oil. Yep. Um, so does it, does it harden like rock hard or is it like soft? Mate, it's, it's like, um, it's like rubber. It's, it's, it's like trying to tie tear chunks off a tire. Like right. it's, it's, very, it's so very sticky hard. And Mate, you, you've got to use a crowbar to get these heads off once it's dry. Hey, wow. Like, you're not just going to lift the head off like a normal head gasket. You've got right. to find someone to put a crowbar under it and you've actually got to pry the head off. They, they don't just come off easy. Like, All right. So 
So yeah, this uh, three bond, what's it called? 1207B. Yep. Yeah, if you want to put a sump on and you don't ever want it coming off or leaking, you <laughs> may use that. But good luck to you when you get it off. That's the problem. You've got to clean it. Yeah. Like, and getting all that glue off, you might as well throw a sump in the bin and get another one. All right, so you can see again, just filth plus the ink there. So, so I've just ground out these uh, water passages. A little bit didn't line up perfectly, so you can see they're a little bit elongated. They just didn't line up with what I had on there when I got the gasket back. All right, gasket's been cleaned. Move on to the cylinder head. Give that one more final go over. Like I said, when I oil, when I assemble these, I oil them up real hard, so. You're gonna see oil coming out here from between the seats on the valve, so a little bit of oil. If you don't wipe this out of here, what happens is when you drop the cylinder head on, the oil will leak down and hit the face as you're trying to position the head on with the gasket glued and everything. Yeah. So it's better to just clean all the chambers, all the face, try and get all the oil off because any oil that sort of leaks down out of head bolt holes or any sort of drains, mate, you, you're gonna find that that's gonna end up between the gasket surface. and. Doesn't matter how good your glue is, if there's oil between it, it's not going to stick. So yeah. So preparation's key here. It does take a bit of work, a bit of a keen eye. Yeah, so it's really hard because these valves are right out against the edge. So there's, I can see oil here. I'm just trying to get to it. If it doesn't leak down whilst I'm sitting here prepping, it's not going to. Uh, it's not going to leak down on me when I drop the head on. So that's clean and dry now. That's beautiful. No lint. It's, yeah, no lint there. So now move over to the block. So this one's a little bit harder. The cast iron has got a lot of sharp edges on it. So when you run the rag over it, it generally does drag lint into the, pro, into the mix. What I do is I, um, I break clean my hands down to get rid of any oil off my hands. If you wipe your hand over it, as a clean hand, no oil on your hand, you'll um, generally find that the skin can pick up the lint. Okay. So. Beautiful, dry, clean. Now I've just got to get any of the shit out from in the groove there. So what I'll do is I'll try using my airline and what this can do is it can actually bring uh, oil out from the piston rings from install. Oh, yeah. So if it, oil, if it oil comes out, you just got to clean it again. So I've just got to get... Wait, there you go there. That's a fair bit. Clean the actual deck face again, making sure not to get any lint inside those grooves. If there was oil just in the bottom of those grooves, it would have really would that really make much of a difference? Like if, if it's gonna if it's gonna press down once you clamp it down. Uh, there's a little bit of clearance beneath them. Yeah. Um, and but it's it's not there that I'm concerned about. It's more just sitting up on lint. Like if, yeah. the, if the ring does sit up on lint, it's going to yeah. give it an uneven surface. Right. Like we're talking, these rings have three thou protrusion from the gasket. Okay. So if you make it in uneven at all, I mean, lint's probably not a lot. I, I couldn't, I, mean, I haven't tried to measure lint. But um, this is just the method that I've sort of gone with and it's worked. So I'm just going to stick to it, I guess. Probably wouldn't make much of a difference, but I'm not going to try. Ah, oh, it's just one of those little tips that if you don't know, you, you wouldn't never, I'd never would have thought of that, but it's just experience. You yeah. Work that stuff out. Okay. So, what do you think, Nick? 
no lint in the grooves beautiful clean and dry okay so now happy with that I'll clean off my firings I mean these look immaculate but I tend to wipe everything down with brake clean and a rag before it goes in I mean let's see how clean they are nice clean section of rag let's see if they're dirty yeah see that yep you think it was clean One more go. Just cut through the rag that time. It's a nice fit. I love it when they snap in like that. I didn't I didn't even hear it. Didn't you? No. I'll get you on the next one, you'll hear it. Okay, let's get close. Okay, so, wait for it. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's it. Okay, so fire rings are on. Heads prepared. Let's get some dowels. Yeah, so you need custom dowels. Yep, so these are our bigger dowels. Yeah. Um, I think I've got some OEM ones here to quickly show you. Factory dowel basically fits inside of our custom dowel. Wow. Oh. So that's the difference in them. Drop the dowels in. Dowels done. <laughs> YouTube problems. All right, and cut. <laughs> yes. All right, guys, so here we got the three bond, gaskets prepared, heads prepared, blocks prepared, heads prepared. We're all ready to go. Time for some finger paints. Are you guys ready? Do it, man. <laughs> this just sucks, this job. <laughs> I hate this thing. All right, here we go. It's probably going to suck less than a blown head gasket, though. Oh, substantially less. Okay. So... Finger paints, way too much. That's all right. So the idea is to get the thinnest possible layer on, spread it right out. You almost want to see it tra like transparent. You almost want to be able to see copper. If anyone's looking for like tips and tricks, I mean, I can't really give much other than less is more. Yeah, depends on how much experience you had in kindergarten. Pretty much, yeah, I guess so, yeah. I was actually really good at finger paints. Finger paints. <laughs> Terrible at maths and science and everything, but finger paints I was probably all right at. Okay. Now this is this is the side that's easy because now I've got to do the other side without the gasket touching the, the cardboard, which is really difficult. Okay, so nice even film. I've seen guys use like a tripe roller for like fiberglass work. Okay. Then um. And uh, that they they seem to get results with those. I've never used one, but. I'm just all about. And the key is, you really don't want this stuff on your fire rings. So it's no, not, it's not no. as simple as putting it on the on the block. Hell no, yeah. no way. No, you don't want this on the fire rings. The fire rings have to be the the, the material directly to the cylinder head. I yep. almost gave it away there. So here I'm just getting rid of excess and smearing out excess. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now, just get a rag. Got a rag. That's yeah. Good. yeah. Somewhat semi dirty one. Now, this is the hard side. Of 
You've got a bit of work time, have you? Huh? Like it's not going to set super fast. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, you've got a bit of work time. It doesn't smell terrible. No, it's not too bad. Have you ever tasted Loctite? No. Man, it's bad. Really? Yeah. <laughs> tastes the same, does it? It tastes fucking good. You know, I mean, I haven't swallowed it, but I've tasted Loctite, not because I wanted to. It's not like I'm just, you know, sucking down bottles of Loctite, but, um, <laughs> but I've tasted it because it's like falling in my mouth or something, or it's got on my lips when I'm like under a car and I'm trying to Loctite a bolt in above me. Yeah, And that's then, you good, know, huh? drops in your mouth and you're sort of like, that's not that bad. That's all right. <laughs> Which is scary because it's, it's like sweet. It's sort of like... Um, You'd think they'd put something in it to make it taste terrible. Oh, yeah. But um, no, it tastes pretty good. 10 out of 10, would have again. <laughs> so this is annoying, this doing it like this, like the second side, because you've got to sort of hold the gasket and if you've got a flimsy gasket like this one, it's, uh, it can um, bend. Yeah, you don't want to fold it. Yeah. The good thing about the fire gasket, uh, firing system is uh, once you have a head come off because you've got like a cylinder head issue, melted valve or something like that, and you've got to replace the firing gasket, you don't have to replace the rings. The rings always reusable, yeah. but the gaskets basically throw out because to get this shit off, it's uh, more work than it is to buy a new gasket. And these gaskets are, I think, are about a hundred bucks. So you just buy the new copper gasket and you reuse your rings. So most racers who use this system might have spare spare up uh, gaskets around. Okay, so now there's a little bit more prep work involved in this. Once I've got my coverage nice. So that's it's looking all right now. Making sure it's all around my water holes, my oil holes. That's my oil feed over here. All right, so now I'm going to clean off. Clean out the inside of this hole. Okay. Alright. It's a bit thick in some spots. Just sort of going over it, just having a look on it it's in the light just to see thick spots. Get rid of, in a, rid of any excess. Uh, now, the fun part. I can you just pass over the brake clean next? All right, so got the brake clean on standby, but I probably won't need it. So now we're just going to wipe the inside of this, like this. So none of this goes on the firing. No, 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 the brake clean's just standby. If I have to make an adjustment, it's so clean. Okay, now, go around. It's not too thick. It's a little bit thick there. Spread that back. It's pretty good there. A little bit thick there. Spread it around a little bit. Okay, check the other side. It's way too thick there. Spread that back. A bit too much thickness there. Yeah, real bad there. Okay, one more go from this side. Got to keep the rag away from it. Okay, now the final piece of the puzzle. So this is the oil feed at the front. Like I said, we're basically just gonna clean the inside of the hole out. 
And then I'm just going to angle the rag in a position where there's just a bit of copper showing. Like that. See how there's a little bit of copper visible on the flat? Yep. So now when we squish it down, it's got somewhere to go. This, yeah, it's gonna. Yeah, it's not gonna beat up on the inside because this is our area. this is our oil feed to the cylinder head. Yeah, right. The other holes, it doesn't matter. Get a little bit of bead in the water jacket, not a big deal. That's a very important one there. This is the important one. Good. All right, so there you go. So almost like I bought one, eh? Yeah. So clean it up, make it look a bit pretty. That's it. So a little bit of copper showing on both sides. No glue on the inside, which is good. Our firing holes are all clean and free of um, glue. So this is ready to go on. So I'm just gonna look at this and double check. Yep, okay. All my holes line up correctly. That's what I want it to be. Okay, that's it, gasket on. No glue around our fire rings, that's a good sign. When it dropped on. Yeah. Almost looks like you've done that before, eh? You'd, you'd think that I might have done it before, yeah. eh? Okay, back to the head. She's clean, dry, ready to go. Let's put it on. So I'm just gonna look through my dowel hole here. That's on. Dowel hole on. That's it. Cylinder head's on. And that's what all the fuss is about, eh? That's it, man. If you, uh, if you stick to that, if you stick to that strategy, if you're doing fire rings and you can find someone who can do them or you want to try them at home yourself, the hardest part you're going to face is trying to find someone that will machine them up for you and, and do all that and you find your supplier for your copper gasket because it's generally not the same person. Um, and it is a big conversion. There's a bit of work in this, yeah. um, especially if you're doing half inch. More finger paints. Yeah. Mix another batch there, eh? Whenever you get this graphite grease from ARP, squeeze it out onto a table like this and mix it because you generally find the oil and the graphite separate. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they test their tensions with this correctly, you know, mixed. Right. So if you get it and it's more of a paste, or you squeeze it and a bit of oil comes out and then the paste, and then you just use the oil or just the paste, it's not the same tension you achieve. Yeah, it's incorrect. Yeah. Right. So... The 4 has long and short studs. I'm just going to go through and drop all my short studs down first. So I'm just going to drop the washer down in first because I'm pretty certain you have to do the washer and then the stud. And then the nut can go over the top. So, yeah. so you're kind of racing against the clock here. You want to get these things. Now I'm starting to go a bit quicker here because there is, there is a bit of, there is work time on them, but um, I want to try and it's hot outside here in Australia. What, what, what you said the temperature put in your neck? What's the temp out there? Yeah, it's about 30 degrees. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dry, it's a dry heat too, so. Yeah, so, sort of just working a bit quicker. So I'm using a scribe just to um, help align all my washers down. Cause if it, uh, if the washer doesn't go into the hole and it falls into like an oil gallery, it'll fall into your sump. And I don't really want to pull the sump off on this. It's a bit of work. Yeah. So, so I always just put a scribe in there, drop the washer down, and it always makes it into its hole. When you do like say an SR20 where they've got like a, um, a timing case at the front, this hole here especially, because the washer can go down in that gallery there. Yeah. You just drop it in like that. You can't miss it. Um, when you when you do it on an SR20, the two front holes, if you miss it, mate, it goes straight down the cover, straight into the timing chain area. Yeah, they're massive down. right at the front, aren't they? Oh, mate. And then, I've never done it. I've got close. We dropped one once. And um, it sat on a ledge where the, um, the hydraulic tensioner goes. And uh, we managed to get a, uh, a magnet on it and save it. So Oh, lucky. Oh, man, it was stressful. 
I was like, if that goes into the sump, we are screwed. And if it doesn't go into the sump, we're even more screwed because we're going to pull the timing case off, which means the head has to come off. We didn't want to do that. This is a real messy part of the job. I hate dealing with this ARP grease. It's just, it's just messy and unavoidable. So when I do these, I um, I dry fit, try fit them dry. Yeah. So this head's already been bolted to this block. So this gasket and these rings, it's all been measured. Um, because the last thing you want to do is get to this stage and then put a nut down, and then the nut doesn't fit between the cylinder head. So I had to pour it out all in here to try and get the nut to fit. I had to go buy a socket specifically for this job. It's weird because uh, ARP must have changed their nut design recently because uh, in the past I haven't had to do that. I've had uh, done a couple of 16 valves at half inch. Yeah, there isn't really an off-the-shelf kit for half inch 4A stuff, is there? No, there's not going to be, no. You just have to work it out. Yeah, you could buy my kit. Just, just go, to, <laughs> go to MT Performance. Go to the Instagram page and ask me, and if I say, sorry guys, I'm too busy, it's... Uh, Generally, because I'm too busy. Like I said, I'll probably go down to about 90 pounds um, to start, and I'll see. I'll see how it feels as I'm tensioning it up. Yep. So I might go like 30, 60, 90, and then if it makes it, I might go the makes it and it feels good. I might go the 110. So you just want to progressively tighten it down because you're going to go to such a high, high level. No, you know what? That felt pretty good at 50. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to send it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So if you come and have a look here, see the amount of bead that we've got coming out. Yep. So if you look over here, this is where the oil feed goes up to the head. See how, how little there is compared to the front of the head. Okay. So that's obviously, it's smeared in more yep. towards that, that oil feed hole. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I think I'll just go, I'm gonna go 95. I think I'll feel safe at 95. No, you know what? Just do it. Go on 100. Let's do it. Okay. Kick that down for us, Nick. There you go. It's coming, so stressful. <laughs> so he's coming down to 100 foot pound and you're a little apprehensive because if you do pull oh. a thread out of the block, you're out of time. You're We're gonna out of be, time. You're yeah. gonna be completely screwed. You're trying to get this motor back to the States. So Matt's under a little bit of stress right now. He's not talking as much as he normally does, which is fair enough. Oh, oh that's tight. <laughs> Four more. There we go. That moved a bit. Oh, God. It's so stressful when the bottom of the stud moves. Yeah. Because it edges and you're like, oh, did, is this going to pull? And it's like... One of the things that Matt's mentioned before is that he doesn't want to stop and start on the thread. <coughs> he wants to go with one full It's got to be one movement. As soon yep. as you stop, it binds. Yep. And then when you try and start it again, it'll click, but it's not 100 pounds because if you mark the angle that it was at, 
back the thread off and then do it back to the tension, yep. you'll see that it moves more. So you have to do it in one move. Once it starts moving, it has to hit the tension. And so you you'll see, see I won't stop moving until it clicks. And as you can see, he's done that with every, every stud. Nice fluid motion. Beautiful. <coughs> All the way until it clicks. Yeah. If you stop, you've got to back it off. Here we go. Last one. Come on. Beautiful. <sighs> so stressful. Yeah. All right. You, you could not afford to lose a thread there. No. This is. This is the this is the scary point. So we're. All right. So we're through the uh, danger zone, guys. So. Now we're going to have a break for a minute. Um, I'm just going to have a drink because it's sweating bullets here. Um, I'm going to come back in about 10 or 20 minutes and I'm just going to check the tension to see if any of them move. Like I said, normally they bind when they stop. So I'm going to get on them and I guarantee you they're all just going to click if one moves. We've got one of a few issues. The cylinder head's soft, the alloy's soft and the alloy's been crushed. And if it moves again, we've got to start thinking about is the alloy soft? You can hardness test these all you like on the, the deck face, but sometimes you can't, you know, no one has hardness tests the actual stud where it actually clamps into the block down here. So yeah. um, if that's the case, we've got to go through and tension it back up again, wait 20 minutes again, wait half an hour again, wait a day. We don't have time, so we're just going to wait half an hour um, and then recheck again if, if it moves, if any of them move, um, and then we're going to move on from there. We'll put the cams and start timing the engine up. But... Uh, we're through the danger zone at the moment, guys. So next is we'll just uh, check it in 20 minutes. Very cool. That moved too. That didn't move. That moved about one or two degrees. That moved about one. That moved about one. That moved about one. That didn't move. They're tight as though. I didn't move. Yeah, that's good. So we had about, what, seven studs then that moved about one or two degrees. Three of them didn't move at all. So it's good. Cool. Well, I'm pretty sure I remember my one's moving like four. Four, four degrees, degrees like, or yeah. something. Yeah, they, like I say, they, you've got you've to double check that. You probably don't have to and it'll be fine. Um, but uh, I, I check it every time. So that'd be it for this video, guys. If you liked the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see part six, where we get the front timing assembly together, and Matt shows us how to do a leak down test, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.